Coal mining is tough, dangerous work. Miners risk their lives to extract a resource that powers our world. Before any coal can be mined, you gotta dig a way down. That's where shaft sinking comes in. Think of it like building a really deep, vertical tunnel. This shaft is the lifeline of the entire mining operation. It's the main artery for miners, equipment, and of course, the coal itself. Imagine you're standing on a vast field, knowing that beneath your feet lies a wealth of coal. But getting to it is the challenge. Shaft sinking is that crucial first step, creating a safe passage into the earth. It's a complex process that requires careful planning, specialized engineering, and a whole lot of guts. Without a well-built shaft, there's no mining. It's as simple as that. But shaft sinking isn't just about digging a hole. It's about creating a safe and efficient pathway for miners and materials. It's about ensuring that the mine can operate smoothly and that everyone underground can breathe easy and get back to the surface safely. Before you even think about breaking ground, you need a plan. And not just any plan, a detailed blueprint that takes into account every possible factor, from the type of rock you'll be digging through, to the potential for underground water. This is where the geologists and engineers come in. These folks are like detectives, using all sorts of fancy tools and techniques to understand what lies beneath the surface. They drill boreholes to collect rock samples, studying them to figure out the strength and stability of the ground. They map out fault lines, underground water sources, and any other potential hazards. But it's not just about what's underfoot. These engineers also need to consider the size and shape of the shaft. How wide does it need to be to accommodate the mining equipment? How deep does it have to go to reach the coal seam? These are all critical questions that need to be answered before the first shovel hits the dirt. With the blueprints in hand, it's time to get our hands dirty. But before we start digging the main shaft, there's a lot of prep work to be done. Think of it like laying the foundation for a skyscraper. You gotta make sure the ground can support the weight of what you're about to build. The first step is clearing the area. Trees, rocks, topsoil, anything that's in the way needs to be removed. Once the site is cleared, it's time to start digging. But we're not going straight down just yet. We need to create a stable platform for our shaft sinking equipment and that means digging a shallow, wide pit around the perimeter of the future shaft. This pit, called the collar, provides a solid base for the heavy machinery that will be used to excavate the shaft. It also helps to prevent loose soil and rock from falling into the shaft as we dig deeper. Once the collar is excavated, it's reinforced with concrete and steel to create a strong and stable platform. Now, we're ready to start digging down. Section 4 breaking ground, different ways to dig a mine shaft. Now comes the hard part, excavating the shaft itself. There are a few different methods for getting this done, each with its own advantages and drawbacks. One common method is called drill and blast. As the name suggests, it involves drilling holes into the rock, packing them with explosives and blasting away. It's a loud and messy process, but it's effective for breaking up hard rock. Another method uses something called a shaft boring machine, or SBM for short. This beast of a machine is basically a giant drill bit that chews its way through the earth, excavating the shaft as it goes. SBMs are incredibly efficient, but they're also incredibly expensive. So they're typically only used for very large or deep shafts. In some cases, miners might use a technique called freeze walling. This involves circulating a supercooled liquid through pipes drilled into the ground, freezing the surrounding earth into a solid mass. This frozen barrier then acts as temporary support, allowing miners to safely excavate the shaft within it. Section 5, Shoring Up the Walls, Making the Shaft Strong and Safe. As the shaft gets deeper, it's crucial to support the walls to prevent cave-ins. This is where things get a little like building a chimney, but upside down. As sections of the shaft are excavated, crews install rings of sturdy material to line the walls, this lining or support can be made of concrete, steel, or even specially treated wood depending on the ground conditions. Imagine building a giant Lego tower, but instead of stacking blocks, you're fitting together massive rings of concrete or steel. These rings are carefully lowered into the shaft and bolted or welded together, forming a continuous watertight seal. And it's not just about preventing cave-ins. This lining also helps to prevent water seepage, which can be a major problem in underground mines. Think of it like waterproofing your basement, but on a much grander scale. 
In some cases, additional support structures like steel arches or concrete buttresses might be needed to reinforce the lining and distribute the immense pressure from the surrounding rock. Section 6. Breathing easy, ventilation and other essential systems. A mine shaft is more than just a hole in the ground, it's a lifeline that connects the surface world to the depths below, and like any lifeline it needs to provide the essentials for survival, starting with fresh air. That's where ventilation comes in. Imagine trying to breathe through a straw that's hundreds of feet long, that's what it's like for miners without proper ventilation. To keep the air fresh and breathable, large fans are installed at the surface, forcing fresh air down into the mine through dedicated ventilation shafts. This fresh air then circulates throughout the mine, pushing out harmful gases and dust that can build up during mining operations. But it's not just about breathing. The shaft also serves as a conduit for other essential systems, like power cables for lighting and equipment, communication lines to keep in touch with the surface, and pipelines for water and compressed air. These systems are like the veins and arteries of the mine, carrying vital resources to and from the working areas.